Welcome to the new and improved Nothing Without You, uh, the video blog. As you can tell, I have uh, invested in some software uh, to, to make these a little more presentable. We're still not at professional level yet, but we're working on it. If you think back to the first ones I did when I was filming them with just my Kindle Fire, I have since added a, a decent camera and now I'm going to try some, some entry level type software and see if we can make these a little better. Uh, what we want to do today uh, is jump back into Matthew chapter 5, uh, looking through the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, the section we're going to deal with today is beginning in verse 17, going down through verse 20. Uh, I'm going to try to streamline this a little. Uh, I'm only going to use three versions. Uh, today we're going to look at the Christian Standard, which has become my default. Uh, we're going to look at the English Standard Version. Then we're going to look at the New Living, and then lastly we'll look at Eugene Peterson's The Message. Uh, but I will go ahead and begin by reading our section from all four versions, uh, beginning with the Christian Standard, and this is Matthew 5, 17 through 20. Don't think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or one stroke of a letter will pass away from the law until all things are accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. And remember, the kingdom of heaven is the end result when we begin our walk through the Beatitudes. Remember, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then lastly, blessed are those who are persecuted, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is further building on that progression. Uh, the same passage from the English Standard. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And then the new living. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And then Eugene Peterson, uh, the message. Don't suppose for a minute that I have come to, demol to demolish the scriptures, either God's law or the prophets. I'm not here to demolish, but to complete. I'm going to put it all together, put it all together in a vast panorama. God's law is more real and lasting than the stars in the sky and the ground at your feet. Long after stars burn out and earth wears out, God's law will be alive and working. Trivialize even the smallest item in God's law, and you will only have trivialized yourself. But take it seriously, show the way for others, and you will find honor in the kingdom. Unless you do far better than the Pharisees in the matter of right living, you won't know the first thing about entering the kingdom of heaven. The first two are more uh, literal type readings of the passage, especially the English Standard. Uh, and as we pointed out in other videos, uh, the New Living gives you more of an interpretive view, trying to explain what is meant by some of this, because this can be a difficult passage. And then Eugene Peterson, once again, is putting it in a totally different spin. Uh, and scholars admit that this is a difficult text to deal with uh, because what Jesus is saying is that the law will endure as long as creation endures. Uh, 
But Paul, the Apostle Paul, makes it very clear in the book of Romans and in his letters that believers in Christ, Christians, are no longer bound by the law. Uh, that the Mosaic law, uh, as Mark Moore puts it in his book, is now defunct. Uh, so the question is, and Mark Moore poses this on page 172 uh, in his uh, Chronological Life of Christ, how do we uh, reconcile what appears to be a contradiction? Uh, going all the way back to Thomas uh, Aquinas, there have been those that have suggested that when you look at the Old Testament and you look at the laws, that there are moral laws that deal with right and wrong. There are civil laws that were meant for the nation of Israel as, as a theocracy where God was their leader. And then there was ceremonial law, the religious laws that God expected from them as a holy people. Uh, and the theory, and, and once again, I'm, I'm, I'm using Mark Moore as my reference here, but the theory goes along these lines. The ceremonial law was abolished at Calvary when Jesus died and ended the sacrificial system. Uh, the civil law that the nation of Israel was ruled under no longer applies because now we're a part of this kingdom. This, this, earth, uh, this earthly kingdom's passed away. Now we're part of this spiritual kingdom that's not physical. So the civil law is no longer applicable. So that just leaves the moral law. The problem you have is, is when you read the Old Testament, you have to determine, well, what's meant to be ceremonial, what's meant to be civil, uh, what's meant to be moral. And even the problem then, because the Old Testament never comes right out and states those things, uh, and sometimes they, they overlap uh, themselves. Uh, Mark Moore points out that uh, the laws about the Sabbath could be construed as both a ceremonial law and a civil law for the nation of Israel. Laws about divorce are civil, but they're also moral. Uh, and then when you get into all the different sacrifices and offerings, they're ceremonial and moral as well. So there's some, some uh, amb ambiguity. Uh, so we can't go and say, well, this law only applies here, this law only applies here, and this law only applies here. So what is Jesus talking about? Uh, how did he fulfill the law? And Mark Moore points out three common explanations as to how this could have happened. Uh, the first is the idea of predictive prophecy. Uh, and that basically states that the entire Old Testament was always pointing towards Christ. Uh, God always knew, even before the creation of the world, because God knows everything. There's foreknowledge. God knew what it was going to take. So the entire Old Testament... Uh, all of the covenants, all of the promises, all of those things were always pointing to what Jesus was going to do there at the cross. So in that sense, by actually uh, coming here, uh, he was the fulfillment through predictive prophecy. Secondly, Jesus is the only human being. Remember, Jesus is fully God, but he's also fully human. Jesus is the only human to ever perfectly keep the law. He didn't break any of them. So in that sense... He fulfilled the law because he perfectly kept it when no one else could. He's the only one that could fulfill all of those requirements and all of those laws. And the, the third way that we can understand it is that through his redemption, he has fulfilled the law. Uh, we have a debt because of our sin, and Jesus' death paid that debt. So he has fulfilled uh, the curses that come from breaking the law, and has given us the blessings that come through it. Uh, some things to think about. Uh, things that people have been debating for as long as the church has, has existed. Uh, and, and as I pointed out, this is a difficult passage. Uh, it is interesting, though. Even though we as Christians are no longer slaves to the law, Paul makes that very clear in the book of Romans, that we're no longer slaves to the law, that we have freedom. Uh, we're supposed to be slaves to righteousness. We're no longer bound by that law. Jesus says very clearly that God's laws and God's commands are still to be obeyed and still to be kept, and they haven't been swept away. Uh, verse 18, he talks about not the, sm not the smallest letter or one stroke of a letter will pass away until all things are accomplished. Uh, 
until he returns and finally establishes his, his eternal kingdom on, on new earth uh, and sits on his throne in New Jerusalem, none of this stuff will be completely done away with. Uh, it's interesting that the English Standard Version there says, uh, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota or not a dot will pass. Uh, iota is actually, it's a Greek word that we pronounce it that way in English. In, in Greek, it's a iota. Uh, it's a tiniest little mark. Uh, in Hebrew, some of their letters are almost identical except for these tiny little marks. Uh, I believe the old King James Version says a jot or a tittle. Uh, and, and sometimes it was just the tiniest little mark would distinguish between letters in Hebrew. Uh, in, in Greek, you have subscripts and little tiny little marks and dots. And if you want to think about it, uh, if you have a lowercase l in English, and this is the this is the example Mark Moore gives, if you have a lowercase l and a lowercase i, they look very, very similar. You just have that little dot over the i, which separates and lets you know what the difference between those things. It's very tiny, but it's very important. And he says what Jesus is saying is there's nothing insignificant uh, in the law. None of it is going to be just swept away, but it has been fulfilled. Uh, Jesus has fulfilled the law. However, we want to understand the fulfillment of the law. Jesus has come and fixed that problem that existed in the past. Uh, that, that was the significance when, when Jesus died of the temple veil being ripped from top to bottom. Uh, because that place that was forbidden, that only the high priest could go in once a year, we can now fully enter in on our own because of the blood of Christ. Uh, the temple no longer exists. Uh, Paul makes it very clear that we are now temples of God and God dwells inside of us. So Jesus has fulfilled everything in the Old Testament in one way or the other. Uh, he, he did it by fulfilling all those prophecies that had been spoken. Uh, he did it by being the only one that was perfectly obedient to it. And he did it by dying on the cross and, and raising from the dead. And he says he still demands righteousness. He still demands right living. Uh, think about where we have been so far, going through those Beatitudes, that progression to get more and more like Christ, the process of sanctification. Uh, we're supposed to be salt, and we're supposed to be light, and we're supposed to go out into the world and make it a better place. The Pharisees were the legalists. They were the ones that, that worried about every little tiny thing. So on the outward view, they were extremely righteous. And Jesus says, you need to be even more righteous than that because deep inside they were wicked. Deep inside it didn't mean anything. He's like, I want you to be just as righteous outwardly as they are, but I want you to be righteous on the inside. It's an interesting thing. Uh, it's a challenge for us. Uh, because the truth is, is a lot of the stuff in the Old Testament, especially when you look through the Mosaic Law and you look through the Levitical Law, and you look through a lot of that stuff, it, it really, uh, there are questions. Uh, and sometimes we, even as Christians, try to throw those things. I, I have tattoos on my arms. Uh, you can see them there. I've got tattoos. Well, I get, I get, well, you can see that one, and you can see that one. And, and I've had people, well-intentioned uh, believers, lovingly tell me that, well, the Bible in the Old Testament says you, you're not supposed to have tattoos. And, and that passage is there. Uh, it does say that you should not cut yourself or make marks for yourself for the dead. It says that in Leviticus. Uh, and most English translations say make tattoo marks. So it does say that. But in the exact same block of scripture, the same block of laws, it says you're not supposed to wear clothes made from two different types of uh, fabric woven together, uh, that men are not supposed to trim the hair along the edge of their beards, and, and on and on and on and on. And if you're going to, you can't take them and pick and choose the ones you want. It's not like a, uh, I hate the analogy, but it's not like a Chinese menu where you take one from column A, one from column B, and one from column C. You have to keep it all. If you break one, you've broken them all. And it goes back to what we were saying about Jesus fulfilled those things because he's the only one that perfectly kept them all. But our challenge is, is to live right lives, to be righteous. Uh, we're already justified through the blood of Christ. We're already forgiven. 
our, our challenge is, is to draw closer and closer to Christ. It says if we draw close to Christ, He draws closer to us. And it's that process of sanctification being made more holy and more righteous. Uh, it's something to think about. Now, perhaps we'll come back and talk about these things uh, in future videos, but we, I wanted to go ahead and get back into this, uh, especially with this new format and see how it goes. Uh, once again, uh, click like if you enjoyed this. Uh, if you didn't enjoy it, click that you didn't like it and then leave me a comment explaining why. If there are things you would like to hear us discuss or talk about, leave a comment and let me know you're watching. And by all means, subscribe and share these videos with other people. So may God our Father give you grace and peace. Uh, and may you strive to live your life uh, following Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Have a great day.